Well, hey, CrossCard fans. All right, so let me talk to you about this machine for just a minute. Number one, it's way better than any of us predicted it would be. I figured the solid axle would just be motivation to put rear suspension on it, but it's not. Once I put this seat in here, it was money. It, it's amazing what a racing seat can do to soften uh, light terrain. I mean, it's a yard, it's bumpy, but it's not like trail riding. I wouldn't be afraid to take this on a trail, uh, depending on how much it's groomed. But as far as just being in the yard and the standard bumps of a yard that you don't want to drive your car through, it does phenomenal. It is way surprising. Even Dave and Junk said that it, it's confusing that this rides that well for being a rigid rear solid axle. And they, they actually told me to not put rear suspension on it, just leave it how it is. But I'm pretty sure we can put a, a great inexpensive rear suspension on it, keep the solid axle, keep the cost down and make this thing just an amazing entry level cart. So the key to that, there's two keys to that. Number one was this racing seat. Number two is this clutch. This is a uh, Comet 44 Magnum 40 series clutch and it is amazing. It is amazing. Once I put this thing on, this doesn't get hot. The driven pulley doesn't get hot. The belt doesn't get hot. It doesn't fray. So we ran between five people, two full tanks of gas through this, doing all the drifting, doing all the high speed runs, doing all the burnouts. And this didn't even bat an eye. Like it was on point the entire time. It just cleaned up everything. So you put a racing seat in one of these, you put this clutch in it, and you can drive it however you want. It's fantastic. But it's time to start reworking it. It's time to put some rear suspension on the back. So that's the update for this. It's hard, it's hard to tear it apart and make it different because it is so fantastic. This still has more, and we haven't even modded the engine yet. That's a bone stock Predator engine, and it's just it just goes. So let's move on to some other updates. So I've also sourced the donor bike for the two-seater. This is a 1990 Yamaha FJ1200. So this is an oil-cooled 1200cc four-cylinder five-speed sequential gearbox street bike engine from the 90s. Now, obviously I would love to have uh, a 2022 GSX-R1000 put in there, but these are budget builds. I'm on a tight budget with these things. I, I can't just dump 30 grand into making like the most amazing cart ever. I'm trying to make the most amazing cart on a beer budget. So, this has 80 foot-pounds of torque. It's got 120 horsepower. Now the only reason it's 120 horsepower is because it redlines at 9,000 RPM. Modern street bikes redline around 15, 14, 15,000 RPM. So you take that extra 50%, put that onto the horsepower because RPM is a derivative for horsepower off of torque. So this would be easily uh, 180 horsepower if you use the same formula and raise that red line. So this is going to be super punchy. It's going to get power low end, mid range, not so much on the high end, which is perfect for cross carts, which is perfect for off-road buggies in general. You don't want to spend all your time maxed out on the RPM. You want some grunt. So this is going to work out really, really great. And the 90s still had heavy bikes. Now this is an aluminum frame, but it's a solid motor. The transmission is solid. The synchros are solid. It's just a heavier bike in general. So the engine, transmission, clutch, everything is made to work with a heavier drivetrain. I'm hoping that pans out better for the two seater since there's gonna be some extra weight, extra tubing, a passenger, um, probably bigger wheels and tires. 
the, the, the plan was to source a bike that was inexpensive, available, with parts that can handle a heavy load. Now, you can pick these up all day long for 1500 bucks running. Uh, this bike has a rusted gas tank, but it will run if you spray starting fluid in it. So that was good enough for me. Uh, if something run, runs with starting fluid, it's gonna run once you tune the carbs and, and, and prep the engine for its drive. Dual exhaust, sounds amazing. Yeah. All right, so on to the two-seater. This is what R&D looks like, folks. Big shout out to JD's Garage. They figured out this rear spindle setup to fit with the Miata axles. Uh, I've got a, an adapter on there. So the Miata axle puts out four by 100 bolt pattern. All of my wheels are set up for four by 110. I didn't have to buy all new rims for this because I want to test smaller diameters. I want to test the cross cart tires. I want to test my big off-road tires and maybe even something else. But I like all my stuff to be interchangeable. So the rear track width as it sits is going to be 68 inches wide from edge of the tire to edge of the tire. Now you notice there's something missing here. Well, old KJ Racing is working on something big for you guys and it's very close to completion. This is gonna be something affordable. It's gonna be something for everybody, including me. And it's gonna be an awesome alternative to the Polaris rear ends I've been using. This has been needed for a long time and I'm super excited about it. Now, this is also what R&D looks like. So with the Miata axles, the rear track width is a little wider especially with those adapters than my stock setup. So I started out with Polaris A-arms. Um, I do like the 525 Polaris Outlaw A-arms because it has a two pot caliper, which makes the brakes awesome. Uh, I bought a set of 660 Raptor A-arms calipers. Now the 660 Raptor brakes kind of suck they're single pot brakes. So they work well for an ATV, but maybe not so much for a buggy. I bought these because they're a good replacement for my 600cc cross cart, the number five. So none of this is wasted because they're all backup parts. But I wanted a little wider of a front end. I wanted the front end to match the rear end. So I need to get something that was a little bit wider. Now these are the front a arms upper and lower with the hub from a Polaris Razor 800. Now you can see the hubs are steel. I found these by researching that caliper I like that's on the 525. A lot of companies use their components in different things. So all I had to do was cross reference that caliper that I liked to see what other models it was on and boom, found the Razor 800. Now there is somebody in the Facebook group that is already using this setup. So all I did was check out his and his is working out great, which makes me really excited about this. Now I bought the front end, which has the tie rods, the A-arms, the hubs, brakes, calipers, and the drive shaft. Now you're gonna need the drive shaft, not because it's gonna be four wheel drive. If I had the budget for it, this would totally be four wheel drive, but we need to take this end, the CV end, cut off the shaft so that we have a stub axle. You can't just run uh, a crappy axle through there. So we're gonna use this as a stub axle. Here you see I have the standard steering that I use, but I also bought a Razor 800 steering rack because it was only $65. So that's R&D funds used. Now, I think I've told you guys before, it always takes building two of something to make it perfect. As you can see, the end links for this are about four inches too narrow to use with my front end or else it would be a direct, direct bolt on part. Now I'm gonna work this and do my magic to figure out what we can do with it. But all my stuff is designed to be modular, adjustable. 
If you are familiar with razors and you want to use a full-on razor front end, including that front rack, you can totally customize the position of these. The rear of them ride on a lateral bar, and these just ride on this front end here. So you could measure the ends of your rack, set these lower and upper A-arms to fit whatever rack you want to use and it will work out. The, the important thing about the end links and tie rods on your rack is for bump steer. It's for bump steer. I like to have adjustable bump steer and this rack isn't adjustable because it's specifically made for a, a vehicle. But you can totally customize all this stuff. I design around the needs and people being able to source parts other than the parts I use. But I also want to give you guys a good example. So that's where we're sitting. Two seat progress. Uh, this is going to be on its wheels soon. Uh, there's a nice surprise coming with the rear end along with the rear end. So fortunately and unfortunately it is getting to be summertime which means I like to do more driving than building. So that's what we've done. We've been driving all the stuff. I've got the number five, the 600cc Supercross cart. Uh, I got the clutch replaced in it, back up to 100%, and it's it's fun. It's incredibly fun. <laughs> so we went from driving the 600 with the six-speed sequential manual, uh, 100 horsepower, 14,000 RPM red line. And we were switching back and forth between the Predator 459 budget build and the 600cc and we had just as much fun in either of them. It didn't matter. It, it, it's so hard to explain how this stuff works but this is incredibly fun in its own way. It's incredibly fun in its simpleness. It's gas and brake but it's got enough power to drift, do burnouts and, and enough speed for my yard to have fun. Now, if you guys remember, the goal of the budget build wasn't just to build the least expensive, cheapest cart you could buy, but it was so that this could drive with the other cross carts, not beat them, not even be competitive with them, just to be able to enjoy driving it along with them without feeling like the last kid picked in a dodgeball game. And it did just that. Whoever was behind the wheel kept right up, lap for lap, around my little home track, uh, cutting some corners, just riding with it, which was the whole goal. So I'm super excited. It makes me want to soup up this motor, put the rear suspension on, and maybe have it be slightly, <laughs> slightly competitive to, uh, I don't know, maybe the 500. It's not going to be, but the fact that this can just drive with those is a huge win for everything.
So I'll, I'll get back to work when I can. Uh, I've been organizing my barn, organizing my garage. It's spring cleaning time. So yeah, I, I love doing this stuff. Thank you for everybody for being on this ride with me. And I'll see you guys soon. <laughs>